Hey everyone and welcome back to the Amber Living Vlog. This is Beyond Film School and I am Amber and today we're talking about the walkie PA. Before we jump into the video, please remember to subscribe if you are new to my channel so you can get more videos on the film industry. Remember to hit up that PayPal link, it really helps me out. Thank you to everyone that's contributed already. You guys are amazing. A couple of weeks we're holding another Zoom meeting. If you guys want to chat with me, I'm bringing on some other PA friends and people who work in the industry to talk about their worst days on set, their horror stories on film sets. That's going to be July 9th on a Thursday at 3 o'clock. The one staff PA position that I hate from experience is walkies, okay? Um, it's honestly, it's a good way to get to know departments, but honestly, it's just, if you lose a walkie, like, it's just always on you. Uh, walkies um, is my least favorite position. I would say walkie PA. I did this once on a pilot, and while I don't hate it, it is, for me personally, the most stressful. Yeah, I just don't like doing walkies as a, it's just not fun. As you can see from what my PA friends are telling you, the walkie PA position is like the most hated PA position out there. We're gonna get into why it's hated so much, but first, let's talk about what a walkie PA is. The walkie PA is the holder of all walkies. Not only are they the holder of all walkies, but they are also the right hand to the key PA. The walkie production assistant is usually the key PA in training position. So if you're trying to be a key PA, being a walkie PA is a good spot to be in if you want to move up into being a key PA. You basically have a front seat to what a key PA does. The walkie PA is a staff PA. All right, so let's jump into the walkie production assistant responsibilities. First and foremost, they are responsible for every single walkie. This means uh, the logging and distribution of every walkie the production uses. They have to make sure that all crew, all PAs, everyone that needs a walkie, they have to make sure that each person has a working walkie. Keyword being working walkie. Walkie PAs are gonna have an inventory list that includes the walkie, the serial number, and what person has what walkie. And since we're talking about inventory, Oh, let's just get this out of the way now. They are responsible for actually taking inventory every now and then. Sometimes it's twice a season. Sometimes it's every month. It really depends when the office wants you to do inventory of the walkies. Inventory of the walkies is making sure that when you gave out those walkies, the people actually have them still. I felt bad for the walkie PA on the one show I worked on because the office was constantly making him do inventory like every few weeks. It was very, very annoying. And the crew members were really annoyed with the walkie PA because he had to keep checking with the crew members to make sure they had the original walkie that they were given. It was a whole thing. Inventory of walkies is very annoying. You have to deal with inventory. And that was my least favorite part about it. The inventory and like the, the, uh, the pressure from the office about like, hey, like... Uh, have you found this walkie yet? Have you found this walkie yet? That inventory list is super, super important because if you do lose a walkie, you can refer back to the inventory list and say, hey, such and such is supposed to have this walkie and then you can try and find it. Inventory list is super important. So if you're trying to be a walkie PA and if you are going to be a walkie PA, remember your inventory list, super important. Don't say I didn't warn you. They're also responsible for troubleshooting walkies that may have issues. Is it transmitting right? Is it receiving? Is it the headset? Is it the surveillance that they're using? They have to troubleshoot and figure out what the problem is with the walkie. If the walkie is broken, they are also responsible for replacing that walkie and getting that person a new walkie that works. This is broken. Here, do something about it. Fix it. You're not a radio tech PA. Uh, fixing it usually involves uh, putting gaffing tape on it with the words broken and then just generally switching things out, but you can't fix anything. Unless you can, I don't know your life. For the bigger days on set, the walkie PA is also responsible for distroing walkies to everyone that is new coming onto set. So it might be day player PAs, might be new crew members. Either way, they're responsible for making sure that those people get walkies and they're responsible for making sure they get those walkies back. So depending on how big the day is and how many more crew members and PAs might be on, they might be getting a new walkie package. Now a walkie package is basically one or more. <laughs> I've had walkie packages that were like three or four or five Pelican cases worth of walkies. So the walkie packages are no joke depending on what is going on for that show or movie. But the walkie package will have all the walkie parts. It is the walkie PA's job to label that walkie, distinguish that walkie package from the other packages, the main package that you have. There's a lot of packages happening. But either way, you have to make sure that 
you keep those packages separate and they're labeled in different ways because you don't want a tandem unit package to look like the main unit walkie package. So tandem is a whole nother unit that will be shooting at the same time as the main unit and you have to make sure you're keeping track of both packages. Keeping track of all the walkies, being responsible for them, making sure they all get returned at the end of the run, keeping track of what day is coming up are going to be heavier in terms of crew and PAs, and so we need to order more walkies, making sure you order the right amounts, so you always have enough walkies to go around, but not ordering too much because you don't want to go over budget. So being responsible for all of that and making sure everyone has what they need and everything is working, that can be stressful. Here's why people hate being a walkie PA. If a crew member or another PA or whoever loses a walkie, it is your fault. Wait, what? So yes, we're talking about another human being that is a grown adult. If they lose their walkie, it is your responsibility to track it down. Did they leave it in the van? Did they leave it in one of their trucks? Did they leave it on set that you were at yesterday? Was it at a different location? It is your job to track it down in your job only. And keeping track of the walkies, uh, even though you've labeled, labeled them, taken pictures and notes of who has them, but then that person gives it to like their boss who then leaves it in their truck and then forgets where they put it in their truck and then an additional the next day comes and takes it from the truck and then our inventory is messed up. When I was a walkie PA, one of the everyday additionals, he, I mean, he was an amazing PA. He has a great personality, but he came to me one day and he said, Amber, I, I, I think I lost my walkie, but I think I know where it is. It, it has to be in the AD office at stage whatever. And I'm like, okay. We weren't there for another week and then we finally get to that stage and the walkie wasn't there. And then I said, hey, walkie wasn't there. It's nowhere to be found. It's nowhere. You know, where else could it be? He goes, oh, you know what? I was in the van and I had to drop off the film. So maybe it was in the van. Let's track down the van. Talk to Transpo, <laughs> talk to the Teepsters. No walkie to be found nothing. So needless to say, that person lost a walkie on my watch. You can't really do anything in those situations. If they leave a walkie in like an Uber or a Lyft, that thing is gone. So now you have to go to the office, production coordinators, and say, hey, XYZ, this person lost a walkie. Then you have to fill out a damage report. It's a whole thing. It's really annoying when people lose walkies. As a walkie PA, you are protecting rented gear that production has rented from a company. So if someone loses a walkie, that is about three to five hundred dollars for that walkie that someone lost. And production doesn't like spending money, obviously. The office does not like spending money on lost items. All right, so let's talk about bricks for a second. Now, what is a brick? A brick is a walkie battery. A hot brick is a fully charged battery, and a cold brick is a dead battery. So the bricks, you also have to make sure that they don't get lost. You have to protect those bricks. <laughs> and you have to make sure that those bricks are hot and they're fully charged for everyone that needs them on set. And if you're a good walkie PA, you're gonna make sure the PAs that are on set, the additional PAs or everyday additionals, they all have walkie batteries on them so they can be around crew and then they can supply the walkie batteries. So you don't have to run around with a chicken with your head cut off when someone says, hey, I need a hot brick. You know that yes, you're gonna have hot bricks on you as a walkie PA, but other PAs around you are going to have them. So instead of you running across the stage, you know XYZ PA is there and they can give them a hot brick. But here is the trick. As a walkie PA, you have to train. I mean, I don't want to say train, but you have to get all the additional PAs in the habit of making sure they get the dead brick before that crew member walks away from them when they hand them a hot brick because that's how cold bricks get lost. They have to make sure that they get the cold bricks so it goes right back on the charger and then by the end of the season, you're not missing 50 hot bricks. You are responsible for charging the bricks, you are responsible for moving the charger for the bricks if it might be in the shot, depending on what is happening for the scene. It also mostly just involves looking for a place to charge batteries, like, oh, is this safe? Can I plug this in here? I remember on a show one time, I was a background PA and I was on set and no PA had a hot brick on them. So the gaffer on set that day 
needed a hot brick and he refused to work. He stood in the middle of the room, held up his walkie and says, I'm not working. I'm not lighting anymore until I have a hot brick. And, and like production just stood still. I grabbed my walkie, took the brick off that one and gave it to him because I was like, I'm not having anyone <laughs> blaming any one of us PAs up here for what just happened. Because obviously we're all supposed to have hot bricks on us and we didn't. And uh, I mean, only because we couldn't find any hot bricks. So it's the whole thing. So you want to make sure you prevent those type of things from happening on set. Hot bricks get lost in vans. They get lost, like people put them in their trunk of their car. They get, they, they get lost everywhere. So they're actually kind of harder to keep track of than the walkies themselves. So a walkie PA is going to have to check in with the staff PAs and the everyday additionals. They'll just send a text out and say, hey, check your bags. I'm missing a lot of bricks. Can you make sure that they're, you know, they're not in your car? or your bags or whatever, or your purses. And a lot of bricks actually turn out that way. I've retrieved so many bricks that way. And there's also dead bricks just sitting and holding. There's usually a pile on the table. So, you know, you've got to do your rounds from each department. As the walkie PA, you are also responsible for the brick box. Now, what is a brick box? I will have a picture of a brick box. It looks different on all different kinds of sets. It depends on what production buys. But the brick box has hot bricks, cold bricks. They'll have walkie parts in there. They'll have headsets in there. They're going to have a lot of different paperwork that crew might need, time cards, they're gonna have call sheets, sides in there, and they're gonna have a deck of cards for the Friday game. We're gonna get to that in a minute. So as far as the responsibilities with the brick box go, you are responsible for making sure that the paperwork that's in the brick box is stocked. You have to make sure that it's organized and it's not in the shot. You have to actually move the brick box physically to make sure it's not in the shot for whatever they're shooting. And you have to make sure that there's hot bricks in the brick box because that is the main purpose of a brick box. And usually there's gonna be extra walkies in there. But if there's extra walkies in a brick box and you're not a walkie PA, you should be touching those extra walkies. One of the best responsibilities of being a walk PA, at least I think, is being by the DP or director all day. Now, I'm not even, I'm not lying. You are basically the line of communication directly from them to the first AD. Are we cut? Should we go again? Are we gonna check the gate? Can we move on? You know, stuff like that for the director. And it might be notes for the actors as well. It really depends on the personality of the director and the DP. I liked hanging around the DP. It's usually a little bit more like, a little bit more relaxing because when you're around the director, I feel like it's more like a little bit more tense, but you get to be around those top two people and you can learn a lot from them. So it's like that position is really, really awesome to be in. You can absorb so much knowledge and so much information. As a walkie PA, you get to work with these big players. It's amazing. The absolute worst thing, the absolute worst responsibility for a walkie PA, I think, is hot food. I dreaded it. I hated it. I hate doing hot food. Now, what's hot food? Hot food is the hot meal or sandwich o'clock um, that comes out about four hours after breakfast and three or four hours after lunchtime. It's the meal in between the meals on set. It's too much food either way. You have to go and get food orders. You have to get the menu from Crafty and get the orders from the VIPs, which are the director, script supervisor, the sometimes the producers and the writer. And you have to get all the ADs. So if there are a lot of ADs on that day, you might have like 10, 12 different orders you have to get all by yourself, which is a lot actually for hot food. But you have to get for all the ADs and the VIPs hot food. And man, I, I hated it. Like I said in the beginning of the video, the walkie PA is kind of the key PA in training. You are learning how to be a key if you're asking questions and if you're paying attention. And if that's your goal, if you're trying to move up to be an AD, you definitely need to know how to key. Tied into that, the walkie PA is the fill-in for the key PA. So if the key PA calls them sick, if they need a day off, they're usually gonna be the one to fill in for the key PA. If there is a tandem unit, you will be the key PA for that unit and tandem unit is the second unit that is shooting at the same time as the main unit. Now let's get to the fun responsibility or stressful, depends on the person, could be fun, could be stressful. Let's talk about the Friday card game. Card Fridays, which in my opinion is the coolest part about being a walkie PA. And the one thing I do not like about walkies, although I did get a, get a good kick out of it when I did it, is the cards game every Friday night, uh, especially <laughs> When you're, when you're dealing with the Teamsters with that, uh, yeah, that's quite the experience. Um, it's like you could become the next casino gambler after that, or casino owner, I should say. The card game on Friday has to happen, happens on all union sets, 
every Friday. If it doesn't happen, people are disappointed. They are very mad. Because nothing keeps morale high like a little bit of gambling. And while some sets may do buckets or raffles or nothing at all because they suck, most will often always do cards since it's the easiest and most readily available thing to use. You know, shout out the props, always with the playing cards, right? All right, so how does the game work? You had a standard 52 deck of cards uh, minus the jokers. You buy two decks, all right? They have to look the same. Put one of those decks away, we're gonna come back to it later. Where you go around as a lucky PA, as the crew generally knows your face, you walk around selling cards. There's always like one guy on the set that's like, as soon as you'd sell cards, come to me. They buy as many cards as they like. You have to sell every single card. Never forget to sell to the team series as a general rule. I'm talking about any able body on set, you should be selling cards too. Sometimes you do, uh, I usually do $20 a card, you know, go big or go home. You gotta sell those cards because if you don't sell the cards, the whole game's over. You know, you gotta give everyone back their money. Usually around Martini, using an identical deck of cards. You pull out three winners. And whoever has the matching cards wins the pot. And there is usually second and third place, but just fancy ways of saying loser. I've won twice, it gets very addicting. And it's just a nice way to have something to look forward to every Friday. So a really, really great benefit of being a walkie PA is the fact that you get access to everybody. You are able to move around set. You talk to every department. You talk to every crew member. You talk to the VIP, you talk to the DP, you talk to all the ADs. So it only makes sense that you are the seller of the cards because if you know everybody, you can haggle them a little bit more to buy the PAs a card, because that's what it's all about. The most important part of selling cards, and this is why PAs do it. This is why the walkie PA, it's important to sell those cards. When you find the winners, all right, these guys already make like thousands of dollars a week. They don't need like a hundred bucks. Almost always, you know, it's etiquette. The winners always tip out the PAs. If I give you, if I just gave you $300 because you're your first place winner, you better damn well give me like a hundred dollars back so I can spread it amongst all the PAs. That's really the most important part is uh, PAs earn some extra money because we get paid shit. The PAs put on the card game so we get money. <laughs> so we get tipped out and so we can win a prize. You can either buy a card for yourself or you buy a card for the PAs. I recommend buying the card for the PAs because PAs make shit money. People would always make fun of me because I would hustle so hard. All the I would hustle the ADs so much to make sure they bought the PAs a card. So a couple of side notes for the walkie PA. The walkie PA is kind of like a floater PA, meaning they can kind of do everything. Like for example, they can help with first team if they need it. They can be on the bell sometimes. If there aren't enough additional PAs to go around, they'll fill in to help. So just getting back to that note about being a more experienced walkie PA and filling in for the key PA. Now a walkie PA sometimes is for the really, really green PA that just kind of moved up into being a staff PA. Even if you're a new walkie PA, if you are smart about it, you're gonna make sure to observe as much as possible. And as shooting goes on for a movie or as the season goes on for a TV show, as the walkie PA gets more experience, then they'll start filling in for the key PA. But some shows actually like to hire a experienced walkie PA, meaning they know all the other positions, they want to key, they know how to key, they know kind of what goes into being a key PA, but they haven't done it yet. So it's kind of just like, it depends on what the show wants in their walkie PA. Some just want a green PA trying to move up and some want an experienced PA knowing that they're gonna fill in for the key PA. So I'm just gonna say it, the walkie PA has a very long day. Let's be honest, all PAs have a long day. <laughs> yes, the walkie PA does have a long day, but probably not as long as the paperwork PA. Because the walkie production assistant has gear to take care of, that's actually one of the few PA positions that have a prep day and a wrap out day. Because they have to get all the walkies together, put them together, organize them for each department, tape them to label them for each person, and then they have to distro them on a prep day. And on a wrap day, they're doing all that in a different order. They're taking the tape off, they're disassembling the walkie, and they're getting it ready to go back to the rental company. At the wrap up for production, uh, you're expected to collect all the walkies distributed during the course of production. One would hope you'd have a good system in place 
uh, idiot proofing your inventory for all the tandem and splinter units and just all the days you couldn't be there because someone will inevitably f your shit up. <laughs> That's so true. It happens. You know, stuff will be missing. It always is. My experience as a walkie PA, I did not want to be a walkie PA at first. I was like, you know what? I would love a staff job. I am going to take this job, but I don't really want to be a walkie PA. I didn't know it entailed all that it did. I was kind of afraid of it, <laughs> to be honest. You know, the whole inventory, losing a walkie. And I just got really lucky with a really, really good show, really awesome production coordinator in the office, people who are like really understanding and they know that everyone's a grown adult. I don't know, I just had a really good experience as a walkie PA. In the end, it was like, you know what? I've had some, you know, really great days, some really crap days, but all in all, I think it was a really positive experience. So that has been the walkie production assistant video. I hope you learned some things and be sure to check out the other PA positions. There's a whole series. I've done all the PA positions and we're getting to the last one, the key production assistant. So be on the lookout for the next video. And that is it for now, guys. I shall see you guys next time. Shout outs to Amber. I didn't even know you had a YouTube channel.